So in the summer of 2018, I got a call from a customer that had a Silversides bus just like mine. And uh, he was driving it from, I think, California. And in Arizona, it broke down. It overheated. Uh, they hit something in the road and it broke out the bottom of the radiator and the engine overheated. There were sparks flying out of the exhaust uh, and the engine was just destroyed on it. <clears throat> so I scheduled to go out there uh, in November of 2018 uh, to the desert where it was at. It got towed to a storage lot and scheduled to go ahead and rebuild the engine out there and then get the rest of the bus ready for the road to make a trip back to Michigan. It was about 2,200 miles away from his home. Uh, so I went out there. Uh, some of you guys have seen the end of the video where the bus gets the first start after the engine was rebuilt, but there, I got some more video footage uh, throughout the whole process that I'm going to share here and go through. And just kind of spoiler alert, uh, at the end of the trip, the bus did make it uh, all the way back to Michigan with the only issue it had was the air governor. Uh, the thing that regulates the air pressure uh, for the air system, for the brakes and stuff, had gone out. Uh, but they were safely off the road and got a new one. It, I think it's like a $15 part uh, and got the bus back home safely and it's been doing great ever since. So uh, it was a bus that we totally resurrected in the dirt. Uh, it had several uh, cracked liners, uh, actually broken liners, not just cracked. And uh, it, was, it was severely overheated. Uh, it was very low on oil. But as you watch the video here, you'll see more about it. And you may have seen the end of this video before, uh, but you never saw the whole story. So here it is. Thank you. Oh, and if you get a chance, subscribe to the channel, please. Well, we're leaving for Arizona and Nevada today. We've got a little ice storm that's delaying us here. No, no reason to be driving in the ice. No one will right now too, but it's gonna stop. Got some big old icicles though. Nasty. So I'm working on a 671 here. I got a, quite a few interesting little finds to show you. One thing is, they've used these, this rack is for a non-offset injector. See how at the very bottom, it then there's a foot that goes over and into the injector. So they've moved them over, which isn't, I've never seen it converted, which isn't really a problem until you get to here, where it, it uh, to shut the rack off, you just gotta make sure they're in a good enough position where it, it's nearly touching right there. So that's one thing, not a big concern, but just I've not seen that before. Uh, we've got a, uh, you can't see it right now, several cracked liners in this. Um, one thing that we just discovered that's frightening is the oil dipstick here. When it's in and where it's at, if you look at the bottom there, see how it's, it's just about touching the pan, the very bottom of the pan? supposed to be an inch below the seam right here for full mark so full mark should be up there this is a homemade dipstick they left the full mark on there which is about a two gallons of oil in there it should be way up to here so this engine was running really really low on the oil okay you can see how low on oil this engine was look at that's dry in the pan on both sides Okay. So this engine got hot. It got really hot. Look at the side of that piston. This had that only two gallons of oil in it. They drove it 200 miles like that, but that's not what cooked it. For one, they put 15W40 in it, so it was a little bit thinner. I think that might have helped things get back down to the bottom faster. Um, but they hit something in the road and it took out the bottom of the radiator, and that's what overheated it. Like the bearings? actually look surprisingly good for having that low oil situation. I really thought we were going to be into a crankshaft on this. 
but there's like that that's amazing that is crazy but the heat is what took it out and, uh, and the sparks were flying out of the exhaust that's how hot it was so several of these liners are cracked and this this one's not a cracked one but you can see the side of the piston uh, it wasn't happening in its hole <laughs> it, it's even really hard to turn it over there's so much grinding and scraping in there uh, it's had some leaking the o-rings on the head were leaking so you can see that rusty area there it's even on top of the liner some of these other liners I don't take pictures of them but it's crazy you can see how, how scored it is but I'm very impressed with two gallons of oil in it that they rode at 200 miles I would have not anticipated that happening got tools out everywhere today <laughs> just pressed out some bearings replacing that Let's see what we got going on here. The motor's all torn apart. In order to get the muffler off on here, we had to take the whole end off. Fixed. Hell of a day. Same thing happened on the other side, but two of the inners came off. These are holy shit. So we're upgrading the 671. It had the it's the old style. It had the HV7 injectors in it. Well, they upgraded to N65s, but that doesn't do you any good in this because of the size of these ports. And if I stick my pinky in there, it just barely goes in there. So I'm upgrading to a larger liner port. So now I got clearance there. This is 0.94, and these are like 0.82, I believe is what it is. So a lot more air is going to be able to come in and out in that which is going to help with the N65 so the engine will just breathe a little better get a little more air in and out so that's just when you're upgrading from those old style HV injectors uh, if you go with a larger liner port that makes things a little bit easier for those N65 injectors I'm just working on doing the fit right now we'll get everything cleaned up and ready to go but fitting liners is going to take take a little while today so this silver side has spring brakes on both sides, uh, on the rear, and it's because of this adapter plate here that's been added. Tape measure. I get some measurement on it. So from the bottom to the top, it's about a foot. And at its widest point, it's six inches, and it is made out of, uh, what is it, three quarter inch steel is my guess then, yep. And it just bolts on to the original two holes there, and then it widens out, and it's got the hole for the push rod. And it's like that on both sides, and that allows it to have the clearance at the top, and then clear the drive shaft. Here's the one the other side, the drive shaft side. It clears. We're going to turn it over for about five seconds with the fuel in the off position. Okay, now we're going to give it a little bit of fuel here. Go ahead. Yeah. 
Yeah. Turn it over. You ready? Yeah. yeah. Kind of in a little hole, so. Okay, check the brake, test the brake. That was the hole. <laughs> Set the parking brake. I guess it helps if you put in gear. You're not riding that clutch though, are you? Yeah. Yeah, make sure you don't do that on the bus because you'll... The, the torque of the engine will do it. Okay. Give it a little brake check right here while you got some safety. <laughs> Feel better than before? Yeah, yeah. Pressure gauge working, or at least showing pressure. It's it's, it's buried. Okay. What time is it? Yeah. Pressure looking? Uh, 
you, area. Did you double clutch it or no? No, I just shifted it. Yeah, try it. Go a little quicker if you double clutch it. Now when you double clutch, you just push it down once, push it down again, then shift. You have to let it out in neutral and then push it down again and then go to gear. Let it out in neutral. Yep. Touching it. Out or in and then there you go. Okay, what do you do? Push it in? Push the clutch in, go to neutral, let the clutch out, and then push the clutch back in, not go to third. Oh, okay. gauges look. This steering is mounted to got bent by the tow truck when it got towed and it's been rubbing on the bottom of the tie rod end. Um, and it was catching on that bolt is what it totally stopped on for us twice or three times. So we're gonna get that bent back down out of the way. But, uh, other than that, the test drive went real well. This is the final day out here at the work site. I'm gonna be heading out and he's gonna be heading back to Michigan and that. I'm gonna stop picking up some last minute trash, cleaning the area where we're working at here. I'm a little worried because it rained several hours last night and I'm parked in dirt that is really muddy and sticking to my shoes. So we got this head that we gotta put back in this crate. That's just a pile of stuff for the dumpster. A couple pieces of wood to pick up and still up on blocks over here. So here it is. Should make it back to Michigan the next couple days. We took it on a test drive and let it run for a little bit where we were parked there at the gate and there wasn't a single drop of oil underneath of it. The only thing that we did, fluid we did lose was a little bit of coolant out of the surge tank because it doesn't seal all the way and it had a hundred percent full so as soon as it heated up it expanded a little bit and it kicked a little out so this cooling system's not pressurizing but that's not going to ruin it Phoenix today. <laughs> 